part of the Press Play Podcast Network. All right, well, uh, it is a Victory Monday edition of the Orange is Oranger. Um, Ty is the unrele- unrelenting edition. I like that. Who said that? Do you know who said that? No. We were well, unrelenting. I'm... Miles Garrett said that about them, about their play on Sunday. They were unrelenting. And oh, it, wow. was, it was quite an unrelenting win. Listen, just win, baby. <laughs> you know what? I want to start this podcast just off. Win. I just want to start this podcast off saying something that a lot of people don't say a lot around Cleveland. Kevin Stefanski is a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really good coach, man. <laughs> Look, he, he managed the game as he should have. I think he split the runs in the past. What is it? 33 and 30 or 33 and 30 passes, runs, like, he managed the game like you have to manage the game as the game is going like it's not going to just be exactly how you plan it out and like that's been the frustration with him well this is the second time this year he's done that you know pre pre in his previous seasons I didn't really see him doing that a lot but this year twice he's done that he's took he's taking his game plan sometime and just say you know what scrap the game plan Mm -hmm. we're just gonna do what works and I thought he did a good job of doing that. Um, and, you know, I did the post-game show, and somebody, we got a phone call that's saying, still fire Stefanski. You good. called it, too. You text me. You're like, I'm still going to get that call God, today. No, the man just went in there with a third-string quarterback. He ain't got his start running back. He don't got his start right tackle. He don't got his start left guard. And he won the game, and you still want the man fired? Man, Kevin got it. He got it rough in this town, but I was He does. Up. But you know what, Tyvis, the thing is with this, I didn't want to start out. I want to start out positive. I don't want to go to the negative. But you, and you ready to jump down his throat? No, 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 no. This is more about the team in general. Look, it's any game, any given Sunday. We know that. That's what oh, this league is. I you win each out. week. You've you been, you been watching me on Twitter. Is that what you said? Yeah, I was like my morning tweet. I said, really? I oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> The Browns is going to have a tall task, but anything can happen Man, on any. Why are you and I just linked in you know, so many ways? When we've been and we've been working together for what, this is what two years now. That you know, finishing yeah. each other's sentences. We're here. We're like, giving life advice. <laughs> all the above. But go ahead. What were you? Go ahead. With well, your the, here's this league. Look, we were hoping. I was hoping that we were going to catch the Niners on an off week. Right? Could have been us, and, and it was. It was awesome. It was us. We, we 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 did. I think, you know, I don't want to not uh, not remember what happened last week against Baltimore. And I think with this team, like, you know, if there's one thing I want to pull from this is that, that I hope that they continue, regardless if they win or not, is that they never gave up. And this team historically gives up. And that tells me not only – do they want this, but they do actually feel like it's attainable and that they have a purpose. And so when you have a purpose for something, to attain something, that motivation is everything. And that means that this culture is finally turning a corner. I just, I, I want it to continue. I think that that was the biggest thing for me that I took out of this because PJ Walker did make a lot of mistakes, but he did what he needed to do and he never gave up. You know, this defense is unrelenting. That's the perfect word for it. I mean, and honestly, Tyvis, the defense isn't getting enough credit, I think, from a, from a national standpoint at all. You know, a lot of what I've been listening to is like, well, Niners won't even be th- looking, thinking about this loss in 10 weeks or whatever. And like, it's about how, you know, uh, the Niners had uh, um, Samuels go out or Samuel go out and um, who else went out? Um, McCaffrey. Like, that's that's where the, the narrative has, has gone. And I get it. Like, when you're a good team like that, that that's there's going to be excuses and there's going to be reasons behind that but that is not you know that that maybe played certain parts of it but this defense is not getting the credit and that's 
also something that I've been I've taken away since this game has ended. It's funny, like how you're. It's like you you go through something and like that you get weaned off the hype and the excitement, right? And it starts to kind of set in. And you know, look, the, the defense is not perfect, but look, the, the first drive and the last drive were not great at all. Um, but outside of that, I just feel like they're not. This Jim Jim Swartz is making a major difference. Um, and uh, a lot of man coverage versus zone from last year, also making a big difference. Um, so I'm I'm excited. I I want that. I want those core pieces to continue. I guess is my point. That's what I want to be able to take away from this: is that the fight is not going to be given up, um, and we're not going to dip like we did last week. Well, okay. Let me. I got to dissect a lot here. So. <clears throat> To, to to start, I'm a I'ma start off saying that this defense definitely shows something. You know, they they were they it, the difference between this game and the Baltimore game, it's a big difference. Baltimore week, you thought now don't get me wrong, the defense, they don't really need no motivation. They've been flying around all season. They've been looking really good all season. They've been kind of heart and soul of this team. Mm-hmm. And I think that Going into that game, I think that defining out Deshaun Watson wasn't playing, I think it hit a lot of people worse than a lot of people believe. You know, because coming in that game, you you like, okay, we good. We got Deshaun. Deshaun coming off his best game offensively. We back, baby. The Browns is flying around. It's our boy. We doing things. And then to get that news at 1030, like, yeah, he can't go. It's like, oh, man. So I think it was kind of deflating, not just for the offense, but for the entire team because Deshaun – you know, whether whether fans love him or hate him, you know, he brings a presence to that locker room. Like, when you got fo- – when four back there, as they say, when number four out there, too, he liked that. So, when you don't have that guy, you know, it can be deflating to a team. And I think the wheels just kind of fell off the thing, you know, I think. And the lack of went, planning time. It was like there was no real yeah, it, plan yeah, at all. Exactly. It was just – it was just – that week was just terrible. Mm-hmm. But – Coming into this game, you got two weeks to prepare, and you know Deshaun isn't playing. So coming into that week, even Kevin said it after the game, it was just a different look in these players, eyes, especially on the defense. He said, you name a defensive player, they had a different energy to them. They had juice all week. They was pumped because they knew that the only way they was going to win this game is if they came out there and ball. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, from a national na- uh, national media narrative, that you played you play Cincinnati, but it was in the rain. Steelers offense is trash. Tennessee's offense is trash. And Baltimore put up 28 on you. So is this defense real or not? I mean, you even got Dante Whitner saying in the pregame that that the Browns is pretenders. Yeah. So this is what this is what the outside media is thinking of you. They're right. like, yeah, it's cute and all, but y'all ain't playing nobody. Let's see what you do against San Francisco. So I think the defense needed no motivation going into this game. Mm-hmm. They already knew. Like, we're about to go out here. We about to put we about to put the world on notice. OK, and you, why do you go out and get guys like a Juan Thornhill or is it Darius Smith or Dalvin Thomas and those guys who's who's been the postseason and then Juan Thorn, who, who's got that Super Bowl experience? It's for pregame scuffles like that. OK, they come out there and it was just flat out disrespectful. I mean, you're yeah. doing drills and you and the opposite, the opposing team run through your drills. That's that's flat out like spitting in your face. All oh, right. So, it's totally disrespectful. Yeah. So they responded. And, uh, and guess who was front line of it all? Juan Thornhill letting everybody mm-hmm. know. I'm like, brother, we not going for that. It's different. Like, I don't know. You might have been able to pull that off a couple years ago, but now that I'm here, we not mm-hmm. standing for that. And I love how everybody ran up there and they was ready for the smoke. They wasn't ducking no smoke. So the attitude has totally changed because last year, I don't know if they would have did that. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I mean, it was the Atlanta Falcon game still sticks out to me like, like a sore thumb where they just continuously ran the ball down your throat. I mean, I don't know if they was about that life. But now you get guys in there that's like that. It's contagious. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like Jarvis Landry. It's contagious to go out there and be a dog. So they was able to keep that energy. The only thing I didn't like about the – the only thing that scared me a little bit about a pregame scuffle is that if it lingers on in the game, you'll have guys that go out there and do extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Now the whistle's blown and they're taking cheap shots and now you're getting unsportsmanlike penalties. That's when it's bad. But I said, listen, I like they have this fire. They got to keep this same fire for four quarters. Mm -hmm. And now, now that it's chirping going on and this scuffle's going on, you can't hide no more. You have no choice but to be a dog. And I think 
Don't get me wrong, CMC did his thing in that first drive. I mean, coming out there, he hit them straight in the mouth. He looked like the best running back. I was, in I was scared. Yeah, he, he yeah looked but thanks like, to two I, penalties from the Browns, though. The penalties, Tyvis, so though. They got to clean that up. True. Yeah, they do. True. But he looked like I, – I was out there like, I see why this dude is the best running back in football. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They never. They didn't stop. They didn't back down. Like they could have easily folded their cards. I mean, they scored. The offense got stopped. You could easily just fold your cards. But they said, you know what? No, let's keep going. Let's get back out there. And they kept hitting him, and they knocked him out the game, and they knocked Debo out the game. So they knew that they was gonna be ex extremely physical. And then Brock Purdy, you got you got arguably the two front runners of the MVP out there. Brock Purdy and CMC. You knock CMC out the game and you make Brock Purdy after everybody's been praising him, talking mm -hmm. about him, the best quarterback Kyle has had. This offense averaging 10 more points per game. He's first in the league in yards, touchdowns, hasn't thrown an interception. He is just a man. And you made this guy go from looking like that to just another guy, you know? And that's I mean, that's just the defense that's just go out there and they fear nobody. And I just – I think the attitude is completely different. Like, they don't care who you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody thinks that y'all are this and that, but you got to prove it to us on this Sunday. And mm -hmm. I think they had a, they had the right mentality. I mean, Brock Purdy looked like he was seeing ghosts out there. He looked <laughs> – I mean, the dude, he, he barely scratched 100 yards passing. And I was just like, wow, he could have really had three picks on the game, but – Obviously and you know what? And if and Tyvis, they're winning on third downs. And if you win on third downs, that's you're giving yourself the best chance to win. They um, converted uh, Niners only converted only three of twelve, and um, through five games, Browns opponents are fifteen of sixty five trying to convert on third downs. That's a twenty three percent conversion rate for opposing offenses. Makes Cleveland the best. That's huge. I mean, that's. That's a, that's another way. Um, and did you know that the win marked? You know, I love my stats. Um, you probably saw this. This win marked Cleveland's first over an opponent that entered the game five and zero or better since 1969. That's funny. It's that's insane. Funny. <laughs> and, and so, like, I get, like, I get that that that's. Uh, look, we're not. Uh, I'm not an idiot. You're not an idiot. You know that bronze are counted out for a reason because we we do not live up to what our standards are every year um so i get it i get that the the, the banter and the the belief and the real like is this is this defense for real is this team for real is is going to take more than yeah it's it's going to take more than um however many games to what four games before this um for them to play someone the best in the league um and so I get it. I just hope now that, like I said, um, A, we start to get the reg recognition that we deserve, and then B, that this fight continues, even if we lose. I would rather go out there, even if they did lose at the end of that game. And I sat there, and we got lucky. We got so lucky at the end. I don't know what was going on. I, I feel like I was. I tweeted out about, like, I'm like, is there like a – like a, a kicker voodoo doll or something that we got going on out there because Phil Dawson was at the game. Yeah, I mean, dude couldn't make one, couldn't make a field goal. I mean, it, it just, the stars aligned. And you know what? The football gods were in our corner For this what? week. And For it what? never happens. <laughs> ever. <laughs> this shit does not happen to us ever. Um, I'm, I was sitting at the... Uh, I, I, I was in our work... I was in my work suite and I was sitting like on the step... Uh, there's two rows and I was sitting like on the step. I wasn't even sitting in a seat. And I was like basically up like squatting just because of my nerves were, were going nuts because I thought that we were going to lose the game at the end. Um, and then uh, I was just sitting there and I was like, he's going to miss it. 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 And I don't know if you've seen the Browns tweet out um, some of the stuff that the people were doing. They were putting fans <laughs> like – like trying to fan the field goal away or the vacuum vacuum the field goal away like it's hilarious <laughs> and so it's it's fun i mean i i'm trying to i want to be always you know i'm always trying to be realistic about this team and and what they can do um and not to get too overhyped but man that felt really really good um and if it's going to boost the confidence and to get us to catapult us to the next level then then that's worth it you know um you know, PJ Walker did what he had to do for the most part. He made some incredibly scary throws, <laughs> missed Elijah Moore how many times in the end. Um, so I just, 
I, I just hope I hope Deshaun's back. We, we can talk about next week. But um, you know what I, I did? I was reading um, Jason Lloyd's article from The Athletic, friend of the show. And um, he was talking about how technically. Uh, you subscribe to The Athletic? Of course I do. Look at that. What a, you know, you're a great, you're a great friend. I am, and it's good stuff. I gotta read my, I gotta read I, my dude. I, I told him I ain't paying the five. <laughs> well, well, I think I got a deal right now. I think it's like ninety nine cents a month, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, well, he's, <laughs> Sorry, well, Jason. He, he need to cut me a deal. On it. I ain't yeah. paying the five. I ain't paying the five, Jason. So, well, apparently, you want to use my login time? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you. Don't tell the athletic. Um, so. P.J. Walker, by the way, is technically still not on the Browns' active roster. He was just elevated for oh. Sunday. Oh. So by NFL rule, he will return to the practice squad next week unless the Browns make a, a move to an open spot for him for the for the for on the roster, um, So, which isn't crazy, right? They were going to do that for three quarterbacks on their, their 53-man roster before trading um, Dobbs, but... They can elevate a, pl- a practice squad player up to three times. Um, then he went in to talk about how the Bears, which is obviously who uh, Walker last played for and was released for, um, you know, J- Justin Fields went out with a thumb injury. Um, uh, and I think they have, uh, who's the, ba- I don't know who their backup is now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know, Brandon Allen or something like that? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, whoever finished the game for them on Sunday. And then, um, I mean, technically, he talks about how the Bears or any other team could call P.J. Walker if, what if Fields is out, Fields is out longer than, uh, oh, you know, anyone out. anticipates. He is, he is supposed to miss some time because he has so, a, he got a something with his thumb or something like that. It's a guy by the name of Tyson Baggett. Tyson Baggett. That's okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know either, but they might, they might. Well, I mean, they did cut PJ, so it's not. Like- they did, but they could. I mean, look, he he'd have to agree to go somewhere else. Um, he wouldn't be forced to go, but yeah, you mean, know, the, 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 this is the reality of it. But that's what scares me, Tyvis, because DTR was was the choice last week. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that, cause see, listen, I'd have been on P Squad now, and I'd have been, to, I'd have been on some great P Squad teams. But if a team calls me and says they're gonna claim me, the first thing you, out of respect for the organization that you're at, you go back to your organization. You say this is the deal. Mm-hmm. Chicago Bears want to sign me to their active roster. Are you willing to give me a game check on practice squad? They say yes. Then that decision is yours. Do you want to play or do you want to sit and stay behind, stay in this organization and collect game checks? That's your option. They say no. You have no choice but to go take those three, those three guaranteed game checks if they claim you off a of practice squad. So, if I'm P.J. Walker, like I said, out of respect for the Cleveland Browns, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, listen, Kevin, listen, A.B., listen, Chicago Bears want to sign me to the active roster. Do y'all want to cut me a game check? Because I do love being in Cleveland. Obviously, I had a great game. Mm-hmm. You know, I could see myself being here. If they say, yeah, we'll give you a game check, then, you know, we could, you could ride the wave. But if they say no, P.J., get on the next thing smoking to Chicago. And that is coming from a former – NFL <laughs> practice squad. Well, that's why I also wanted to bring it up because I wanted to know kind of what that mindset is, um, you know, and what would make PJ Walker really actually go. Um, and that's a big. Uh, what, so, talk to me about like the, they get the game. He, they would give him a game check even though he's not playing off the practice yeah, squad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they value you, yeah, they will put. They will and they can you just it. do that. Like I don't know the yes, rule behind that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You ain't never live life until you get a practice squad check. That's a game check. Oh my god! Oh, Holly, you out well, that's there, why right? I'm asking. You go out there. You you literally only practice it two days a week. You work two days a week, and you getting a game check. You I like I bet it's amazing. Woo! <laughs> it's like living the dream. I um, bet. Yeah, but yeah, no. It, and I, I can it, see the Browns definitely doing that. I just don't. I mean. <laughs> it's something it's it's obviously incredibly far-fetched but it is it is a, a it is a possibility and crazier shit has happened um but you know i again he um he did what he had to do i'd give him a nice like look at like c but look c's get degrees tavis okay here we are and uh 
We got the win. You know who else? You know who else um, is just fantastic is uh, Mari Cooper. Man, I and I know we say him. that he is, but he really is. I didn't start him on fantasy, and I'm upset. Why? Because who'd you start like... over him? Well, I oh, guess I, I mean, know why you didn't start him. <laughs> who did I start? I, I, to be honest with you, I started. Uh, it was between him and Zach Moss. Now Zach Moss had 17 points, and Amari had oh. 14, so it wasn't the wrong decision. But you know, just saying. And I won this week too. <laughs> Who gets your game ball? James Schwartz. <laughs> are you are you serious? It's not even. It's a no brainer. Jim Schwartz does. I mean, when he's literally come in here and he's changed the culture of a whole defense, and it's so contagious that everybody that goes out there is ready to go and ready to fight. We would have not won this game if that with that defense that we had last year, they would have never been able to pull this type of performance off. So Jim Schwartz gets the game ball. Not just him, you know, special teams as well. I mean, having those good. Corey Bohork is, I mean, he's an unsung hero. I mean, right mm-hmm. before half, right before halftime, San Francisco's calling timeouts to try to get the ball back, and he bombs a 60, like, seven-yard punt or something like that. Mm-hmm. It gives them no chance to get down the field. So, like, they did some really good things special teams-wise as well. Obviously, Dustin Hopkins. Which they were five. due. Thank God. Yeah. yeah, so, and then I like that they finally took – what is going on with Donovan Peoples Jones? I, I I ain't never seen I, somebody. He I don't know who worse him or T Higgins this he's year. Over, this he's is overrated. I'm over it's, it. I I, I can't. Unbelievable. On a contract, Holly. This man probably been playing football since he was what eight years old. So and I don't know how old he. What is he like? Twenty six right now. So you telling me eighteen years of your life you dedicated to playing football. You've been doing going hard, sacrificing mm-hmm. time, doing extra stuff. You make it to the NFL. You finally get to the year where you can cash in and you just take the year off. Why would you do that? I don't. I don't know. You tell me. What's his? What What's going on in his head? I don't know. I don't know. If I was him. I'd, I'd probably go demand a trade. I would. You gotta get paid by any means necessary. You can't be a. You can't take no hometown discount. Where he's from? Uh, Detroit. No. no, I'm talking about the team that drafted you. Oh. God, yeah. What? What? What year was that? Uh, twenty one, twenty twenty, twenty I don't know. It don't no, matter. It's kinda... it's, it's, this is his kind of. But he's been in the league now year. for like a good. I mean, it's this not is, like it, this is year four. <laughs> you get you have to do four years before you can get your before your contract. As you come in, unless you're first, unless you're a first round pick, you got four. You got five years if you're a first round pick because they can pick up the fifth year option. Outside of that, it's a four year contract. You have to play a minimum of six games every season to get close to get closer to free agency you want to hit free agency because you can break the bank if you don't play six games every year and you play like under that Mm -hmm. then they do what they call you become a restricted free agent yeah where they basically give you a contract and that's what you you have no choice but to take it so you want to become an unrestricted free agent and which he's due to play because he's going to play in six games this season and he should be able to cash in but like i said with the with the stats that he's putting out and one target no catches getting pulled off a punt return it's not looking good for him it's not yeah 2020 we drafted him in the sixth round huh yeah i kind of forgot about him last game (laughs) yeah trust me (laughs) i mean it wasn't like i I mean not even thinking about him um, I, sit there, I sit back and I look at his – I check the box scores and look at his stats all the time. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, wait, Browns are back on Wednesday, right? So, you know, we're going to have to turn um, turn the focus to next Sunday. Um, I believe Batonio is going to be back. Um, Deshaun is now day-to-day. I, this whole Deshaun thing, the shoulder thing, is just I don't I I it's I tell you what, I think it's he, ridiculous. I think he shook up by this because that was such an incredible win and to not have played a part in it. And I don't get me wrong, when I say play a part, I mean being out there on the field. Obviously he was in PJ Walker's ear all week. Even PJ mm-hmm. talked about it. He did he a did. great job of helping him, preparing him and getting him ready for that game, but 
in a big time game like that to not be the starting quarterback and not be the guy out there to help lead your team to win and see the energy in that atmosphere you missed out on something and it mm-hmm. I know it it hurt oh I know it hurt that's why you see the tweet talk about see you soon and all of that jazz because he he felt that yeah well and look and I and I'm glad I, I want that and I get I don't blame Deshaun for what he's going through right now like I don't I don't at all um I don't think it's really there's any blame for anyone but I I, I think the whole way that it's been handled has just been so wonky and I just don't I, I it, it feels just like the information that was coming out from the team just was not clear and it was not really like strategy strategized like it doesn't make any sense you know this is what happens when you feel the flame of that chair that's what that is you want to make sure you put it all out there in the open and be like listen Deshaun's medically cleared to play but he just chose not to play and you say that because you know like I need to let y'all know like my we we lost because my starting quarterback technically could have played but he didn't want to so he kind of you know it's not on me all yeah and then he would have played then you gotta work he would have hurt himself even more and then it would have been a whole Baker Mayfield thing again it just it would have been this whole thing so I get it look that's he's worth a shit ton of money I understand it and that's fine I'd rather that all just be laid out and and like this is how it is yeah we're being incredibly careful and just say it and just have to deal with whatever you know because you're never going to please everybody clearly I mean that that's how it is but it's just you know Stefanski coming out and saying that and then like you know he they waited till the last minute it doesn't matter well it, it does matter I shouldn't say it doesn't matter it does I don't want to keep harping back on the decisions they have already made, but I do want to make sure that because of those decisions that they've already made, that they are going to make better ones in the future. And that's what makes me nervous from an organizational standpoint, because that's always the overhead lurking issue with the Browns is the organization and the organization's reasoning behind things and their major decisions and even the smallest decisions. Like this is why, we have trust issues. I mean, it just is. So I, I that that's you know what, what you gotta, you gotta, you just gotta believe that things are changing. And, and don't get me wrong, this the whole Deshaun thing. It's it, it, it makes you think. It makes as a Browns fan, it makes you be like, here we go again, man. That's the same old crazy stuff. It's always something with the Cleveland Browns. But and I'm sick of that. Like I'm sick of that. That, that. that that's what think, that's what I can't. I, but Holly, I think it's a, I think they've done a great job of adding enough adults in the room that they can overcome a lot of this stuff. Obviously, they just did it last week. Like one of the best, it's gonna go down in the history books as Jim Schwartz becoming the best hire in the it says ninety nine for the Cleveland Browns because what he's done, just his demeanor, just the way that these. Oh yeah, and he's got a football mind. He's football forward, if, right? Like that's, it's to that's the point. Like it, it, it's to the point that he was he's so good at his job. And so good at what he's done with this team that Kevin Stefanski has no choice but to step his game up. That's why you think. And I got another thing. I think Kevin Stefanski is not good with superstars. I just I, that's I'm gonna put that out there. I'm gonna you could you could do with it what you will. But I just don't think he really works well with superstars. When you got superstars out there in his mind, he's like, I gotta please this guy. But when you don't have a superstar out there, it's like yeah, but that I, doesn't bode I, well for that doesn't bode free. well for Watson. I if, get if that, Watson turns just, into. I, I'm just throwing that. I'm just throwing that statement out there. You, like I said, you could do with it. You can you can choose to grasp it, or you could just let it float. Did in you the air. you consider Baker a superstar? <laughs> no, not in 2020. He was not a he was not a superstar in 2020, and he had his best season. Every then he got the big head, and there you go. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, Jim Schwartz. Yeah, I think he's allowed Kevin Stefanski to step his game up because play calling wise. It was a lot of stuff that he did. Now, don't get me wrong. It was some trick plays, but the trick plays actually worked. And I think that's where people was like, they couldn't be mad at him because the stuff he was doing was working. Like, for example, having Harrison Bryant be your quarterback sneak guy and then having him come in, everybody in the world's thinking his quarterback sneak, and he finally pitches it out, and it's a touchdown. It's like – Finally, that I can see the chess game finally starting to play. Obviously, you had to put it on tape, and people was frustrated by that, but – you foreshadow it forward, it worked out in the best. So, like I said, Kevin Stefanski has put – I think he's smarter than people give him credit for. And a lot of the times it's just growing pains. He's got you got to put stuff on tape to make defenses study it. So when they see it on the field, they think it's going to be this because it's been probably a 99% – 
if Harrison Bryant is under the center, it's 99% quarterback sneak. And now he can go against his tendencies or what they study, and he can look successful. So it's a game within the game, but you got to put it on tape first. And it might not look pretty at the beginning, but it's for a reason. And it was later on into the yeah, season. Yeah, and you got to you got to manage, and you got to adjust. I think that's the biggest thing that comes out of this is that adjusting. I mean, he's it's, it's proven every time when he does adjust and when he does game manage correctly. And and smart. I mean, he of course he's a smart guy. I don't think he's not a smart guy. It's just a matter of using all the weapons near Arsenal. It's not, and he has been forced to, whether he likes it or not. I know he doesn't. With Chubb out, to have to really change up this whole offense, you know. And now with Watson out, I mean, it, it's it, it it requires him to be a better coach, a better leader, and a better game manager. And that's he has to. I mean, there's there's no other way. And this is a great test for him. You know, he either takes this and and runs with it, or the the ship goes down and he goes down with it. And we're back to square one, which nobody wants. That I don't think anybody wants to fancy to fail. I don't. I mean, I I I want him to succeed. I want him. I want longevity. I want someone in that that role that we can we know and that knows the organization and knows the team and knows what has worked and, and can be trusted. I mean, you want all of those things. You want tenure. Um, and that is one thing we obviously have not been able to have. Um, and so everybody wants that. I think it's just, you want to make sure that, you know, he's, he's following and, and, and doing the fundamentals as a coach and as, and, and thinking fo- football f- forward. I mean, I think that that's been, so hard that you know he's looking at I don't know whatever numbers he's looking at or what but it's not it's it's getting your head out of that and focusing on what's going on in front of you um because things are not going to go ever the way that you think that they are um so I don't I don't want him to fail I think that that you know we see these really great glimpses of these opportunities when he does end up finally um you know coaching the way that and, and, and coaching a game as it's going on and not how you planned it. And that's, that's really it. So I do hope, you know, I don't know. How are you feeling against, how do you feel against the Colts next week? You know, I'm feeling pretty darn good. I, right. Now. You know, I, I feel really good too. My only thing is that when you have a, when you have a big time win like this, um, you got to come back in and refocus again. You got to relock in because Sometimes you think you got it. You got a big win, and you think you've arrived. Mm-hmm. And look, obviously, the Colts is not the San Francisco 49ers in any way, and they got a backup quarterback as go- as well. But Gardner Minshew has been. He's done some things. Obviously, they didn't look good last week, but he also is the same team that went up in Baltimore and won that game in overtime. So you got to give him credit there. I just don't want them to take him lightly. I don't want them to – I want right. them to continue to keep going in there and chopping wood every day and carrying water every single day. That all Never think that you arrived and never take anybody for granted. Like, we just beat the 49ers, so we just going to roll over the coast because that's not going to be the case. Right. This is going to be a hungry team that's still fighting to try to make the playoffs as well. So you got to go out there and you got to dominate. Um, obviously, they pose some challenges. Uh offensively Jonathan Taylor is still trying to get his groove but they got two running backs because Zach Moss looks really good obviously I got him on fantasy purposes so I know uh, <laughs> but they don't outside of those two it's not a really big threat but they at this point they're getting to a desperate mo- mode you know yeah. where now they can do anything you know you got to be on alert for fake punts and fake field goals and stuff like right. that because they gotta they gotta find a way to keep their season afloat because if they lose well, they drop scheming. this yeah, they dropped this game. Like, it's, it's looking bad for them, especially in the AFC. So, it, it's dangerous. Um, but I just I, – like I said, having Jim Swartz there calms me because it's like he's not going to let them get complacent. Because everybody's sitting there patting them on the back, telling them how great they are. And I guarantee you on Wednesday, he's like, yeah, everybody telling you great, but look, look at this play right here. Look, right. you missed yeah. this. You didn't do yep. this right. So, it's going to be somebody there that's constantly on them and constantly pushing them to get better. Offensively – they got to get that. They're getting healthier, so that's great. Um, I like the I like the game plan that Kevin Stefanski has, but I'm challenging him to do it again. You know, you've had you've called three, you put together three good game plan games this year. S- Cincinnati, you scrapped yours and came up with some great adjustments. Tennessee was a great game plan, and last week was a great game plan for what you had. If you mm-hmm. can do that with that with that, why can't you do that when all the good people are in right. there? I right. love the way you utilize Kevin. I mean, I Kevin Kareem Hunt. 
Um, you fed him the ball, let him get north and south. He brought, he's physical. He wears down a defense, and then boom, you put Jerome Ford in there, and now he can speed out, run people because their bodies is beating up. They're not moving as fast, you know, in the second half of game. So I like that he did that. He just got to continue to do it again. That's 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 my challenge for the Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. Hundred percent. Like I said, it's it's all about adjusting, and it's it's playing the game. But it's 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 playing the the hand that you're given, you know. And that's it, it, he has to he has to change his mindset and think that way. That's where he's been the most successful. Um. So, are you calling a win? Oh yeah, you know, I got the Browns winning seventeen ten. Okay. That's pretty good. You like that? I think they're going to beat him up a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to say 37-14. Okay. Well, I, I, by all means. <laughs> but I hope so. If the, if Watson's back. Watson's so, not back. I don't know if they're going to score that much. but Whether the Watson's in or not, 17-10. Okay. I think if Watson's back, they'll they'll put a lot of points up. I think that – I think you're right. I think he will be Breakout game. amped, ready to go. I think he will be – yeah, ready Breakout to uh, – Elijah Moore throw. breakout game, call it. I'm going to put that jersey back on now. <laughs> oh, it is an away game. You won't be in the box. Are you going to the game? No, no, no. So I'll put it on. No, thank God they're not home. I can't I can't take it. I can't work. I can't work that many days a week, Tyvis. I can't do it. It's too much. I do. I work, I work dang there every day. I know. Six days a week. I don't need it. Every day. So every it'll be day. a nice break for me. What am I doing Sunday? Oh, it's my nephew's baptism. So I would, no off I would, days here. I would love if the, if they let me do it from Columbus. That that If they did that for me. Mm, mm, mm. Well, wish it out. I'd smile. I'd, I'd smile from ear to ear. If they I said, would Titans, start coughing right you, now. You could do it. From Plant Cleveland. the seed. You can do it from Columbus. You ain't got to come up to Cleveland and do it from the training facility. I'd be like. <laughs> I mean, that would be ideal for you. For away games, that makes sense. That's what I'm saying. We'll see. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Well, we'll yeah, leave I it see. at that. We don't want to be. <laughs> Just... You want to keep that. <laughs> we'll see. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what they tell me to do. Yeah. Well, it'll. Uh, here's to another week. You know, we never know what each week is gonna bring. Uh, we were certainly not in this spot last Monday or Tuesday, whatever day we recorded. I mean, so we'll see. A lot can change. Um, it is only Monday. Uh, we'll have a better uh, projection. But yeah, I mean, I think you know, let's let's ride this high at a a steady, realistic pace here. And not dip. You know? I love it. Unrelenting. To the Super Super Bowl, here we come. Unrelenting. I even even barked on Sunday a little bit. (laughs) I would have paid good money to see that. (laughs) People, it's just, it's so funny, by the way. First of all, the traffic situation leaving downtown is outrageous. And I cannot stress the anger that ensues in me <clears throat> having to sit when I leave that game, a home game at the end of the game. But um, a good hour and 15 minutes took me to get home. And I live 20 minutes away. You got to leave at halftime. How could I have left that game? I did. There's no way. I did. Yeah, you went across the street because you have to. It's not across the street. It's down the road. <laughs> First, it's still yeah, downtown. Road roads are blocked, so you have to go all well, out. I know, and, and I got stuck in that crap. Um, but uh, Browns fans are nuts, man. They just they really are. <laughs> I, I, there's, there's the by the way, speaking of the fans, and we'll wrap up. They're the amount of Niners not, fans. They're not, they're not nuts. They're passionate. No, they're nuts. The not the amount of Niners fans at that game. They travel well, don't they? Holy crap. It was about to be a couple fights up in there, too. Yeah, I had to – no names, please. I had to I had to step in between two people, two oh. men. You better me. than me. Muscles gotta, over here. If I got to break up a fight, they're going to be some fighting dudes because I got I got one good wrist, and, and my right wrist is my bad wrist, and I'm not about to jeopardize it. And then on top of that, if they start swinging – 
and they end up hitting me, it's going to go quickly to two on one. So, therefore, if they if two people got to fight and it's up to me to break them up, they're going to fight to the death. <laughs> I hate Stephanie. <laughs> well, imagine me between two grown men trying to calm calm the storm you better than me <laughs> but it worked you know what i i did prevail my cool head prevailed so what can i say fight, if they really want to fight they'll fight if they don't i know especially in that situation who's if fighting they, in a suite anyways you know like they, who does if that they, holly if they really wanted to fight they would have moved you right out. Of the so, therefore, somebody really did. Give me want some credit. To Come on. Somebody really did want to go there. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's, let's hope let's, they both let's didn't. Let's be real about this here. <laughs> we were a little too close to the edge. So hopefully that, that did um, factor in. We'll see. I'm glad they're not home next week. Go Browns. Here we go, Browns. Ooh, ooh, ooh.